Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I would like to talk about symmetry in three-dimensional space. Well, first of all, let me just remind very briefly about symmetry in two-dimensional space. So, if this is the plane, um, there is a central symmetry, which means symmetry relative to a point. So, if you have some kind of point P, which is the center of symmetry, and then you have a point somewhere else, then what you do, you connect and extend by the same length. So if this is A, this is A prime, and the AP is equal to P A prime. Now, another way to present it on the plane is you can just turn the whole plane by 180 degrees. But let's not uh, talk about this particular because it's not really applicable to three-dimensional space. But the first one, the first uh, way to construct it is definitely applicable. So you connect your point with the center and then extend it by the same length. So that's one thing. Another is a reflection relatively to some kind of an axis. So if you have a point here, you drop a perpendicular and extend it by the same length. Now, this we will not uh, discuss today uh, in three-dimensional space, but what we will discuss is this, the central symmetry. And exactly the same way it's defined uh, on the plane, it is defined in three-dimensional space. So, assume that the point A and point B, P are two completely um, uh, uh, different uh, points in the space. This one is called the center of symmetry, and this is the point which we want to reflect relatively to the center of symmetry. So, what we do? Well, these are two points in space, right? We can always connect the line. Uh, connect them with a line and extend this segment by the same length, exactly the same rules, and we get the uh, the image. So if this is the prototype, this is an image. This is original point, and this is a reflection using the center of symmetry uh, relative to a point P, which is called a center of central symmetry. Okay, this is all fine. Uh, by the way. Um, uh, let, let's just mention a very trivial fact that if um, you build a point A prime centrally symmetrical to A relatively to point P, obviously if you start from the point A prime you will get the point A because you have to draw the line which is exactly the same line and uh, it's exactly the same length so you will definitely hit the point A which means that if A is symmetrical to A prime, A prime is symmetrical to A. This is a, a symmetrical relationship between uh, a original prototype and its image. Okay, now, what's important about um, uh, central symmetry is that it preserves the general shape of the geometrical figures, geometrical objects. Now, what I mean is the following. Well, obviously, point is um, uh, symmetrical to a point. Now, how about a line? So, what you have? What if you have a line? Will the image of this line, which means a set of all points symmetrical to all points on this line, will be the line? I mean, intuitively everybody understands that if you have some kind of a geometric figure object in three-dimensional space solid object and you symmetrically reflect it relatively to a line which means every point goes to an opposite beyond this line it should be well almost the same i mean it's a reflection which means it's not exactly the same like left becomes right but the general shape is preserved line to line triangle to triangle uh, hexagon to hexagon, etc. Parallel lines to parallel lines. I mean, everything should be preserved as far as these properties are concerned. Now, obvious things are sometimes <laughs> very difficult to prove, by the way. So, let's just prove, for instance, this particular theorem, that the image of a line is a line which is parallel to this one and also these two lines are equidistant from the center of symmetry P. Which again seems to be obvious, but still needs to be proven. Okay, so how do we do this? 
Well, here's what I suggest. Line is defined by two points. So let's just take another point, B. Now we don't have this line yet. All we have is image of the A and image of the B. Now, what I'm going to do is, I will connect them with a line. And now I will prove that this entire line is actually image of this entire line. Which means that every other point C would be reflected to a point C prime on this line. Okay, that's how I'm going to prove it. Let's consider these two lines, AA prime and BB prime. Both are going through the point P, which means they intersect. And if you have two intersecting lines, there is always a plane which contains these two intersecting lines. Well, that's one of the main things which we were talking about. Planes, lines, etc. If you have two intersecting lines, there is one and only one plane which they define, which contains these two lines. Which means points A and B and B prime and, e and, and A prime are all in that line, in that, in that plane, sorry. So let's call this plane gamma. In this case, it's actually a plane of this uh, board, right? All right, so A, B, A prime, B prime belong to the same plane. Which means I can actually consider the whole picture as two-dimensional. Now, let's consider triangle ABP. Now, it's quite obvious it's congruent to A prime B, uh, P, B prime. Why? Because these two are equal. These two are also equal by construction, because that's how we constructed the symmetrical uh, point A prime. We just connect it and extend it by the same lengths, right? Same thing here. And these angles are vertical, because these are straight lines, right? So triangles A, B, P and A prime, P, B prime are congruent. You have side, angle and side, side, angle and side. Now, what we have right now is that these two angles are also equal to each other because of the equality of the triangles, right? Triangles are congru congruent, therefore the angles opposite to equal sides are supposed to be equal. Which means, by the way, that this line is parallel to this line because this is two lines, this is the transversal, and these are alternate interior angles. So, incidentally, this line, A prime, B prime, is parallel to AB. Now let's talk about why the point C, I chose in between A and B just for convenience, why the image of the point C should fall on C prime, which belongs to this particular uh, line, A, A prime, B prime. Now, here is why. Let's consider triangle Let's forget about this point here. Let's put it a little bit further, just for illustration purposes, and connect it to these two. Now, let's consider the triangle APC and uh, A prime P C prime. C prime is here, not here. C here. Now, these two triangles are obviously congruent for the same exact reason why APB and A prime PB prime are uh, congruent because CP is equal to PC prime by construction angles are vertical this one and this one and AP is equal to PA prime which means that BC and uh, sorry not BC AC AC is equal to A prime C prime. Must be, right? Similarly, if I consider B 
PC and B prime, PC prime. Same thing, triangles are congruent because you have vertical angles, you have sides equal, and you have this sides equal. So BC also is equal. B prime, C prime. Well, let's add them up together. AC plus BC is AB, right? Because this is a straight line. And here we have A prime, C prime plus B prime, C prime. But from the other thing, pr from the other hand, we already proven that A P B and A prime P B prime are equal. So A B is equal to is equal to A prime B prime. So I have A prime C prime plus B prime C prime equals A prime B prime. So this plus this should be equal to this. Well, obviously C must be on this segment because we know that um, the straight line between a prime and b prime is shorter than any other line wherever uh, c prime might be if it's outside so this equality is possible only if c prime is lying exactly on on the straight line between a prime and b prime now if a point is outside here or here point c uh, the uh, logic is exactly similar, so I'm not going to go into this. So, what we are, uh, what we have proven is that the image of the any point on this line is on this line. So, image of the whole straight line is this straight line. We just take two points, make these images go with a straight line, and then we have proven that this straight line is the place where all other points will actually be reflected to images of all other points in this line are lying here all right so the image of a straight line is straight line it's parallel because i was just talking about altern alternate interior angles and why they are uh, these two lines are equidistant from p well again the same thing what is the distance from p it's basically an altitude of triangle a p b and altitude of triangle a prime p b prime that's distance from this so this is distance and this is distance obviously if you have congruent triangles their altitudes are equal so they are equidistant well that's that's the full uh, uh, that, that's basically the, the, the full theorem about two lines which are symmetrical to each other relatively to a center of symmetry the second part of this lecture I would like to talk about planes so image of the line is a line image of the plane is a plane parallel to the original plane and equidistant these two planes are equidistant from the central point exactly the same thing as with as with the, uh, the lines okay so let's go to the planes obviously i will be using the results of this theorem when i will be talking about the planes Okay, so now we have a plane and we have a point which is the center of symmetry. I would like to reflect every point on this plane to other points and what I'm going to prove that the result will be, the image will be the plane parallel to this one and uh, on the same distance from the P as, as the original. Alright? Alright, so what we do is basically logically equivalent to whatever we did with, with lines. Line is defined by two points, right? So I picked two points, A and B, and then draw uh, the line um, from uh, images of these two points. I'll do very similar with the three points. A, B, and C. Three lines, not lying on the same line, define this particular plane. So I just pick any three lines on this plane which are not on the same line. So we have some kind of a triangle here. Now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to reflect these points This is B 
this is C and this is A and I have a triangle A prime, B prime and C prime so pick three points have these images and draw a plane through these three points um, and what I'm going to do is I will take any point let's take it inside the triangle um, and I'm I'm staging right now that the image of this point will be on this plane somewhere within this triangle let's call this point F that would be F prime how can I prove it? okay here is how um, let's just draw any line on the on the sir uh, on this plane through point F which intersects our triangle ABC let's say this line and it intersects at points M and N obviously wherever the point F is on the plane and there is a triangle I can always find a line which intersects two uh, sides of this triangle I need two sides um, why because well you have three different sides of the triangle line can be parallel only to one of them right so the other two are definitely not parallel and if it's not parallel then I can always draw a line I mean there are many different ways to do it all right so I have a line which goes through F and intersects M and N with the sides but now let's think about this way A and C belong to line some kind of line AC right so A prime and C prime um, also define the line on which images of every point on this line is reflected to this that's the previous theorem right line is reflected to line so if A prime is image of A C prime is image of C then A prime C prime is image of AC that's what we have just proven before in the first theorem so every point on AC is reflected into some point on uh, A prime C prime so point M is definitely M, M prime definitely lies here similarly point N lies on BC B prime C prime this is N prime so N prime definitely lies on this line and by the way if it lies on this line it lies within this plane because B prime and C prime belong to a plane so the line in between belongs to the same plane all right so if M prime and N prime belong to this plane then the line between them again which is uh, a straight line has image on the uh, on the plane which is a line from M prime to N prime which means every point on line MN including our F is reflected somewhere within this segment M prime N prime so basically we have proven that any point wherever it is on the plane well in this case it's inside but doesn't really matter it can be outside as well every point is reflected on the point lying on this plane so the plane is reflected into plane that's number one okay now we have two other points perpendicular uh, sorry parallelism between these planes and equidistance from P here is how I suggest to do it let's consider one of these lines let's say a a prime uh, well probably it's better if I will draw another picture of this I need a perpendicular so this is one this is another and my point A now this is P so I drop a perpendicular from P to this original plane and that's where I will choose point A and then this is a reflection this is A prime 
Now this is B and this is C. This is B and this is C. Prime. No, that's wrong. It's central symmetry. So it goes this way. This is B prime and this is C prime. Okay, that's how it is. Now, PA is a perpendicular to this plane. Now, we have uh, made an image of the A, which is A prime, which means we just continue this uh, by the same distance. And we have already proven the triangles, uh, let's say, BAP and B prime, A prime, P, P are congruent, right? Because A, B, B prime, A prime uh, is, uh, belong to the same plane. A, B is parallel to A prime, B prime. And everything is equal, right? That's basically what we did in the previous theorem. Which means that since angle B, A, P, uh, the right angle, and it is the right angle because I dropped the perpendicular, right? So it's perpendicular to any line. This angle, P A prime B, is also right angle. Same thing with two triangles A C P and A prime C prime P prime. This angle is 90 degrees, since A P perpendicular to the plane and therefore to each line. And therefore this angle is also right angle. So it looks like P A prime is perpendicular to two lines, which means it's perpendicular to the whole plane. So that's perpendicularity. And the equidistance means because, I mean, it's obvious because this is equal to this from the equality of the triangles A B P and uh, A prime B prime B A P. Well, so as you see, central symmetry is a very nice feature. Um, it reflects point to point line to line, plane to plane, and the resulting uh, features are exactly the same. They are parallel to each other, plane and to parallel to plane, line parallel to plane, pl uh, line parallel to, pl to line, and they are equidistant from the center of symmetry. So these are the properties which I wanted to discuss today about central symmetry in the three-dimensional space. I do recommend you to read the description of whatever I have just uh, was talking about on the unizor.com that uh, probably would bring some more logic and again things which are obvious and this is an obvious thing is very difficult sometimes to logically prove and uh, you can observe it in any arguments by the way well one person is considered something to be absolutely obvious which doesn't really require the, the, the proof Another person doesn't really consider it obvious. So we have to really be able to prove. And that's everywhere. Once actually I observed um, the trial and the lawyers were trying to explain something. And it was very obvious for me how uh, poor their logic sometimes is. I mean, we expect lawyers to be able to prove that some, somebody is guilty or not guilty. But that's not easy thing to do. So even the obvious things require uh, significant effort sometimes to prove. So in this case there are many axioms which we have referred to before like for instance two lines intersecting to each other define the plane and some others uh, like, like two points belong to a plane and therefore the line between them belongs to a plane. So some of them are axioms, some of them are previously proven theorems but anyway you have to really employ this sequence of logical statements one immediately following from the previous one to prove anything and that's a very good exercise in this logic thanks very much and good luck